Hello, welcome to the second part of the lecture of Math 400, Mathematics and Economic Modeling. Today we're going to look at the uh, Euclidean norm and you're going to see an important inequality, which is the Cauchy-Schwarz Cauchy inequality. And then we're going to see how we can use this inequality in order to prove the triangle inequality for uh, the Euclidean norm. So let's go to the whiteboard. So in order to get started, we're going to, uh, I'm going to give you some notation. So uh, numbers will be denoted by x, y, r, and so on. Uh, so these numbers can be, so r, this set here, is the set of all real numbers. Okay, then you have the set of all integers, which I will denote by z. We have the set of all natural numbers n. So normally n does not include the number 0. Uh, so it's all integers that uh, are above or equal to 1. So 1, 2, 3, and so on. <clears throat> if I only look at the uh, non-negative real numbers, then normally I will denote this by r+. plus. Okay, so these are all the numbers x and r, such that x is greater or equal to 0. Okay, so this is a, a set notation. So at the beginning of the set, you have all everything that can potentially be in the set, and then it also satisfy what's after the column. Okay, so these are all the elements in R, such that the elements are also greater or equal to zero. And then we have, if I use two pluses uh, with the R, then what I mean is that these are all the numbers that are strictly positive. Okay, and similar, we have r minus. These are all the real numbers that are less or equal to zero. And r minus minus, these are the strictly negative. Okay, so this is just to uh, introduce some notation. So we are, will be interested with numbers that are mainly in r, but it might also be in other sets, z or n. And we are, secondly, we're also going to look at vectors. Okay, so if we have numbers x1 up to xk, right? So these can all be in R. And then what we can do is we can put them into one object. Okay, so for example, x1 until xk. This is now one object, and this object can be called a vector. Okay, so in the course notes, this object is a note, can be denoted, for example, by x, and in the course notes, this is bold. But for, uh, because I cannot write in bold, I will uh, write the line on top of the letter. Okay, so if I write line on top, this means that this is a vector, and a vector is just a collection of real numbers, most of the time, uh, numbers or objects, and here there are k of them. So in this case, we say that this object, this vector, is element of R k. Okay, so here k is the number of elements in this object. Okay. So as I have written it down here, this is a column vector. You also have something that's called a row vector, but I'm not going to make so much of a distinction between column and row vectors in this course, because this is not a course on linear algebra. This is a course on real analysis. So essentially you can think of a vector just to be a collection of uh, numbers. And here, if it's in RK, there are K of them. Okay, so what can we do with vectors? We can uh, add two vectors together. Okay, for example, if we have a vector x and a vector y. So for example, x is x1 to xk, y is y1 to yk. Then if we add these two up, we get here x1 plus y1, and then x2 plus y2, and so on, and xk plus yk. Okay, so element by element, we add the two numbers together, and this gives you a new vector, right? This is a vector of k numbers, and this vector is called the vector x plus y. What can we also do with vectors? We can multiply a vector by a number, right? So for example, if I have a number alpha, that's an r. Then if I take the vector x and I multiply it by a number alpha, what's this? This is also a vector. It's the vector obtained by multiplying each element by alpha. Okay. So addition, 
This is called scalar multiplication. Okay, it's multiplying a vector by a number. So things that you cannot really do is, for example, multiply two vectors together. So uh, it's impossible to take one vector, take another vector, multiply them together and get another vector. Well, in a sense, there are multiple ways to do this. So there's no such thing as uh, uh, multiplication. However, we, we will see another operation of, uh, on vectors, and this uh, operation is called the uh, dot product. Okay, so if I have a vector x and I have a vector y, then the dot product of x and y, I will denote this simply by putting a dot uh, between the x and y. So what's this? Uh, this thing, this object, is now not a vector, but it's a real number. Okay, so x dot y is an r. So how do you get it? So you take the vector x, you take the vector y. So let me put y here. Okay, y. So I have a vector x1 to xk, I have a vector y1 to yk. Then the dot product of x and y. How is it obtained? Well, you take the first element of x, the first element of y, and you multiply them together. x1, y1. Take the second element of x, second element of y, you also multiply them together. Third element, and so on, until you get x, k, y, k. Okay, so for every element you multiply by the corresponding element, and then you add all these numbers together. Okay, so the resulting number that you get is called the dot product. So this is very important in the sense that the dot product is a is a number and it's not a vector. It uses two vectors as inputs, but it produces a number out of these two uh, vectors. So for example, if x is equal to, let's say, 1, 2, 3, the vector containing numbers 1, 2, and 3, and y is a vector, let's say, 6, 2, 1, and then the dot product, you take the first number of x, and the first number of y, so this is 1 times 6, this second element of x and the second element of y, so this is 2 times 2, third element of x and the third element of y, so this is 3 times 1 is 3, 6 plus 4 is 10, is 13. Okay. So one thing that we can do, for example, we can uh, Okay, so something I forgot, instead of writing out this entire sum, you can of course new, use uh, summation notation. So this goes from i1 to k of xi yi. Okay, so this is just shorthanded for this entire sum. So for example, if I take a vector x and I multiply, you take the dot product of x with itself, what do you get? You get the sum of 1 to k of xi yi, uh, xi, xi, right now, x and x. So this is simply the sum of 1 to k of xi to the power 2. You square every element of the vector x, okay, and you add them all together. And of course, this is a, a square is always non-negative, right? So you're adding a number of non-negative numbers together so the resulting number that you will get will always be greater or equal to zero. Okay, and if you have a number that's greater or equal to zero, what you can also do is you can take the square root of this number. So if I take the square root of x times x, what do I get? Well, this is simply equal to from i equal to 1 to n of xi squared, but then taking the square root of this. And this number here, the sum of all the squares of the components and then taking the square root of this, this is called the norm. And we often, uh, the norm is denote, written down as x but then b between two bars. Okay, so this is called the, the norm of x. Okay, and you can do this for every vector. You can take the norm of x, you can take the norm of y, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay. So the norm has a special interpretation. So let me uh, try to give it to you. So let's assume that X is two-dimensional space, 
For example, x consists of a component x1 and a component x2 in the, in the first direction and in the second direction. So what we can do, for example, we can plot this on an axis. As you may well know, a vector x can be uh, shown as a point in two-dimensional space, a two-dimensional vector with component x1 and x2. So what's the interpretation? The interpretation is that x1 is the length of this part here. Okay, So this is the first component. And then x2 is the length of this uh, part here. Right? So this is x2 and this is x1. Okay, so let's look at have a look at the norm of uh, x. What's this? Well, this is the square root of 1 squared plus x2 squared. Okay, so what's this? This is the square root of this squared plus this squared. Okay, and if you look, this length is the same thing as this length. Okay, so what we have, we have this length here. This length squared, and then I have a green, right? You take this squared. Okay, so if you know, you do this, and then you take the square root. So if you go back to elementary school, what you have seen is the uh, Pythagoras uh, theorem. And what does Pythagoras theorem says? Well, it says that the length of the this here, this side here, the length of this side is equal to the square root of this length squared plus this length squared. Okay, which is exactly what we have here with the norm. So uh, this length here is equal to the norm of x. So the norm of x is nothing else than the distance of x from the zero vector, right? And here the zero vector is the same as a vector with all uh, zeros. And you can generalize this to more than two dimensions, right? If you have three dimensional, four dimensional space, basically the norm measures how far the vector x is from the origin uh, that you have. You can more or less generalize this. If you have two vectors x and y, then this here, you can make a similar picture Okay, and you will find that this is the distance between x and y. Okay, so if you have a vector x and you have a vector y, if you put x here, for example, or this is here y, then if you look at the distance between x and y, which is the length of this uh, line piece here, then this will be equal to the norm of the difference bet between x and y. So the norm measures distances in a Euclidean space. Okay, so it's a very useful object. If you want to know the distance between two vectors, well, you take the difference and you take the norm, and the number that you will get will measure the length of this uh, line piece here. Okay, so the norm has several uh, nice properties, which we're going to show in uh, this lecture. Okay, so the first important property is the following. So if you have a vector x and a vector y and they are in, let's say, in Rk, so you have that x minus y is greater or equal to zero. Basically, this says that the distance between two vectors can never be negative, okay, which uh, seems obvious. But the second part is a bit more interesting, and the norm of x minus y is equal to zero if and only if, All right? So here there's the first if and only if the vector x is equal to the vector y. Okay. So I hope that this is this part here is obvious, right? Because it's the square root of a non-negative number. It is always uh, non-negative. 
okay x minus y remember this is equal to the sum of 1 to k of x k minus y k right this is this vector component difference with then squared and then taking the square root right so this is a non negative sum of non-negative numbers so it's non-negative you take the square root you get a non-negative number okay so for the second part here so let's assume that x minus y is equal to zero how can you show that x is equal to y well if x minus y is equal to zero if this is the case then we know that the square root of i some ie from one to k of xi minus yi squared is equal to zero okay squaring both sides we see that sum of one i equal from one to k of xi minus yi squared is equal to zero right so we can get rid of the square root so on the left hand side we have a sum of non-negative numbers and on the right hand side we have zero so if you have a sum of non-negative numbers and they have to sum to one then every number and the sum has to be zero okay otherwise they cannot sum to one they have to sum to something strictly positive so from this it follows that xi minus yi is equal to zero and this holds for all i one to k okay and this it follows that for all i one to k xi is equal to yi Right, so every component of x is equal to the component of y. So from this it follows that x is equal to y. Okay. So this shows that if the norm of the difference is zero, then x is equal to y. And of course, if x is equal to y, if you take the norm of this, then every term here will be equal to zero. You square zero, you get zero. You sum over the number of zeros, you get zero, and you take the square root of zero, which is zero. So also if x is equal to y, then the norm of the difference will be equal to zero. So this is a nice property. Why is this a nice property? Well, it allows you to quickly check whether two vectors are equal. In particular, if the norm of their difference is equal to zero, then the two vectors are also zero, uh, equal to each other. Okay. The second property second property is quite obvious it says that x minus y is equal to y minus x so there's some symmetry going on okay the distance from x to y is equal to the distance from y to x and i hope i don't have to prove this it just simply follows from the fact that here you have a square so if you exchange y with x you get the same uh, and then square it you will get the same number right so this is a summation of identical numbers so the term here and the term here will be the same okay so there's another property that's interesting so if you have a norm of a vector x and you multiply it by some number what happens well you can see what happens you take the square root i1 to k of alpha xk squared right so this alpha xk is sorry it should be alpha xi alpha xi is the i element of the vector alpha x okay so you can bring alpha outside what do you get you get the square root of alpha squared and then i1 to k of xi squared so you can take the if you take the square root of the product as a product of the square roots so this is the absolute value of alpha right do not forget taking the absolute value and then what you're left with is simply the norm of x okay so if you multiply a vector by alpha take the norm then what it means that you take the norm of x itself and you multiply it by the absolute value of alpha okay so in particular for example minus 2 times x will be equal to 2 times the norm of x okay so because 2 is the absolute value of minus 2 okay from this it also follows that the norm of minus x is equal to the norm of x okay so there's some symmetry going on all right and now the 
most important property that the this property is called the triangle inequality is the following so let's assume that you have three vectors x y and z and you want you have the distance between x and z which is the length of this segment you have the distance between x and y and you have the distance between y and z. So the triangle inequality is the following fact, that the distance between x and z is always smaller than the, distance, than the sum of the distance between x and y, and then the distance between y and z. So in particular, it's, uh, you faster go from x to z, the distance is smaller than first going from x to y, and then going from y to z. Okay. So in terms of mathematical notation, we have that x minus z, this distance is always smaller than x minus y plus y minus z. Okay. So this is the triangle inequality and we will use it over and over and over again. There's another a uh, condition which basically follows from this one and it's the fact that if you have two vectors x, y uh, and z that if you have x plus y that this is smaller than the norm of x plus the norm of y okay so how can you see this well you can say okay I will call x minus y let me call this the vector, let me find a new number, let me, for example, call me the vector a. And then y minus z, let me call this the vector b. Okay. Then you can see that y minus x, uh, x minus z, right, this is the same as this plus this. Okay, so this is the same as a plus b. Okay, and let us now substitute this back in. So this is the norm of x minus z. So it's the norm of a plus b. So this is less than the norm of x minus y, which is the norm of a, plus the norm of y minus z. So this is the norm of b. Okay, and this is, this is uh, identical to this thing, right? Except for x is a and y is b, this is the same mathematical expression. Okay, so we only have to prove one of these two. Uh, they are almost identical except for substitution of uh, vectors. Okay, so we will many, many, many times we will use this triangle inequality and in either in this form or in this form. So it's just important to know uh, if you have a, the norm of a sum is lower or equal to the sum of the norms. Okay. So we're going to prove this. Uh, triangle inequality and along the way we'll prove another interesting mathematical uh, fact but let's first take a small break okay so now we're going to start the proof of the triangle inequality, but first we're going to uh, demonstrate an intermediate result that also is going to be very handy in many occasions during this lecture, and this is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Okay, so Cauchy and Schwarz are two mathematicians uh, who probably discovered this inequality or found this inequality. Uh, so let me write it down. So you have two vectors, x and y. Right, they are in RK. Cauchy-Schwarz inequality says that if you take the inner product of x and y, the dot product. So inner product is sometimes called dot product. Uh, and I already make a mistake because I'm talking and writing at the same time. So you take the dot product of x and y, okay, and then you take the absolute value. So remember, if you take the dot product, you get a number, right? So you can take the absolute value of this number. 
then the, the number that you get here is less or equal to the norm of x times the norm of y. Okay, so remember the norm of x is an element in R. The norm of y is also an element in R. So here you're multiplying two numbers. Here you're multiplying two vectors, but you get a number. Right? So this will also be an R. So indeed you can compare this side with this side because you're just comparing two numbers. Okay, so it's important uh, to know the dimension of the object that you're talking about. Is it a number? Is it a vector? Uh, because otherwise your inequalities it's possible that they don't make any sense. <clears throat> okay, so how are we going to do this? We're going to make a direct proof. So we're going to prove this Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So let's first start by taking x and subtracting c times the vector y. And c is now here just uh, a number. Okay, but I will specify it later on which value of c that we would like to take. So this is a vector. Let's take the norm of this vector and then let's take the square of this uh, number that we get. So the norm of a vector is a non-negative number. If you take the square, this will be a non-negative number. Right? So we know that this is greater or equal to zero. Okay, so no problem there. So let's see what this number is. Well, it's the square of a square root, so the square root drops out, and we are left with the sum from 1 to k of xi minus c times yi squared. Okay, so this is just by definition definition of the of the norm. Okay. So this is the sum 1 to k. So we have a square of a sum, right? So we can use the the usual formula, we have xi squared minus the sum from 1 to k, xi c yi, and then plus the sum of c yi uh, squared. Okay, so this is working out this square and then separating the terms into separate summations. And I'm very sorry about this annoying dog that's barking next door. They have a very little dog, but it makes a lot of noise. Um, so please ignore the dog noises on the background. Okay, so let's have a look at this first term. This is the sum of xi squared. Right, so this is the dot product of x and x. Right, so if you take the square and square root, this is nothing else than the square of the norm of x. Okay, this is just a different notation. And then here we can take out the, the c, right, because it's common for every term in summation. So this is minus c, and then you have the dot product of x and y. Okay, so this is also simple definition. And then here, this is c squared, y i squared, so you can take the c squared up front, and then y i squared summation over k, so this is the norm of y squared. Okay, so this is just uh, replacing notation that you already know uh, into the formula. And now we're going to substitute out this particular value of c. So we're going to use c, the value is going to be the dot product of x and y divided by the norm of y squared. Let's try to use this uh, value here. Okay, so use this value. So here we have the norm of x squared minus so c is the, norm, the dot product of x and y, we multiply it by the dot product of x and y, so we have the dot product of x and y squared, and then we have to divide it by the norm of y squared. And then here we have c squared, so it's the dot product of x and y squared. Oh, I forgot the 2. Stupid me. So if you have a square product, 
minus 2 times the product of this and this. So this becomes also minus 2 and this also becomes uh, minus 2. Okay, so I corrected myself along the way, no problem. c squared, you divide it by the norm of y to the power 4 and then you have to multiply it by the norm of y squared. Okay, so let's simplify a little bit. You have the norm of x squared. So here this cancels out with the power of 4 and you have a power of 2 left. Okay, so here we have minus 2 the dot product of x and y squared divided by the norm of y squared and here we have plus 1 times the dot product of x and y divided by the norm of y squared. So if you take this difference, we have 1 times the dot product of x and y squared divided by the norm of y squared. So if you look at the beginning, we had that what we started with was greater or equal to 0, and what we started with was just simply this. right? So we know that this expression here is greater or equal to 0. Okay, so let's put this term to the other side of the inequality. Then we have that this is the norm of x squared is greater or equal to x times y squared divided by y squared. And now you put the norm of y squared to the other side. So we have the norm of x squared times the norm of y squared is greater or equal to the dot product of x and y squared. We take the square root of both sides, right, this side is uh, non-negative, this side is non-negative, so we can take the square root of both sides. This gives us that the norm of x times the norm of y is greater or equal to the absolute value of x times y. Okay, and this is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality that we uh, wanted uh, to demonstrate. Okay. So we're going to use this uh, quite often in this lecture, but we're, the first time we're going to use it is actually now, because we're going to use it to prove the uh, triangle inequality. Okay, so let me start by looking at the vector x plus y. And let me take the square, right, because I don't like to working with square roots. So we know that this is equal to uh, the sum of 1 to k of xi plus yi squared. So this is equal to xi squared. This is very similar to the previous derivation. Plus 2 times the sum of 1 to k of xi yi plus the sum of 1 to k of yi squared. So again, the first one is nothing else than the norm of x squared. The second one is 2 times the inner product of x and y. And the third one is nothing else than the norm of y squared. Okay. So let's repeat the first term. So this is the dot product of x and y, which is a number. Okay, remember this is an R. And any number is less than its absolute value. Okay, so we have that this expression here is less or equal to this plus 2 times the absolute value of x and y. And then we're left with y squared. And now we use the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, All right? So this is less or equal to x squared plus 2 times the norm of x times the norm of y plus y 
squared. Okay. So instead of x, if I put uh, the norm of x is just a number and the norm of y is just a number, right? So for example, if x is, would be a, then this here we have a squared. And if y would be b, then we have here a number b squared. And then in the middle we have two times a b. Okay, and you see that this is just the sum of a plus b squared. Good. So this is nothing else than x plus y squared. Okay, so what we have shown so far is that x plus y squared, which was uh, on the left hand side, is less or equal to, right, because there's a less than equal sign here, is less or equal to x plus y squared. And now the final step, we take the square root of both sides, because this is non-negative and this is non-negative, we are simply left with x plus y, and this will be less or equal to x plus the norm of y, which is a triangle inequality, right? because remember what we had previously, triangle inequality was equal to this, uh, you can call this a sublinearity inequality, right? The norm of x plus y is lower or equal to the norm of x plus the norm of y, which is exactly what we have here uh, for the proof. Okay. Next lecture, we're going to talk about sequences and uh, limits of sequences.